to the Runner X podcast, where we talk about all things running. As many runners know, it's 90% mental. So join Coach Valerie and Coach Caroline as we go through the mental side of running. Welcome back to the Runner X podcast. I'm your host, Coach Caroline, with Coach Valerie. And this weekend, this is we're we're actually uh, recording this the weekend of the Chicago Marathon. Uh, and but hopefully you guys will hear this when other marathons are coming through. I think is our Marine Corps. I think they canceled Marine Corps, didn't they? I have no idea. Um, but this is the season of the runs, right? You have you have Chicago. We have Dallas coming up in December. There's Marine Corps marathons. There's all these. Uh, uh, Boston is this weekend as well because they moved it from April, but. It's really, for me, this, 10 years ago, I did Chicago as my first marathon, and I posted that in our membership, and it was really profound to me that it had been 10 years, and that um, it, it, the, the irony was a woman that had helped me get past a wall at, at mile 17 swore she would, th- thought I was nuts, swore she would never run a marathon, went on to run every Chicago since then and is run, running Boston this go around. Now, in her defense, she's running Boston from the standpoint I'm not trying to beat a time. I'm just going to enjoy the fact that I'm here. She's going to enjoy the journey that got her to Boston, which I think is wonderful. And so what Valerie and I were talking about is we're looking at all these runners that have been uh, training for so long, and this is this big day, and they've put their stuff out there. And uh, you, you made a really great statement, uh, Valerie, when we started talking about the idea of it's a rehearsal. So I was also in theater in high school, right, and almost got a full ride in theater in college. I know you find that hard to believe that I'm theatrical. But um, in theater, you go through a series of, okay, we're going to read the script. Okay, then we're going to uh, walk the script, right? You're going to do scene by scene. You're going to do act one, act two, that kind of stuff. You're going to walk through things. Then you're going to um, do a dress rehearsal, right, of, of that show. And then finally is the night of the show. Well, that's what the, the marathon is. Do you agree that it's like that's the night of the show? That's your production? Right. Um, but everything leading up to it is just... A, is kind of the rehearsal, and it's part of the journey. Is that what you were meaning when you were talking about the the rehearsal leading up to the? Well, yeah, exactly. I just think that when people do their training, well, for me anyway, when I first started training for marathons, like the marathon was always looming right, right at the marathon, and all your conversations were about the marathon, and and then every run was about the marathon, and we got so caught up in getting our miles in and have all these miles in for the marathon. So we didn't pay any attention, enough attention. This is my first marathon or back then in the quality of the, sorry, the quality of the miles, right? It was only about the miles. And as people would get injured along the way, you'd be like, Oh, you're missing your miles. Yeah. You're missing your miles. You're missing (laughs) your, you're missing. Oh, what, what, what is it? I used to say it's about the um, time on your feet. Yeah. Ow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but I mean, I'm just, this, but then the problem is if the, if your thought is it's about the miles, yeah, then the day of the race, if something does the whole time, you're thinking, did I get enough miles? Yeah. You know, because again, even the magic 20, right? We all got to where in the beginning of marathons, like you have to run 20. Yeah. And the reality is guys, you're, per, you're training for an event Yeah. and the event is a 26.2 mile event. And what's interesting is when you start to really get into studying what marathon is, marathon is actually an extension of a 10K. Yeah. So actually training for uh, 10Ks and repeating 10Ks is what actually gets you ready for marathons. But runners in the beginning especially, we had no idea. Yeah. And so we treated kind of every run as like the race. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're instead of treating it those those training runs as rehearsals, right? Like we've talked about before, of test your test your goo, test your test your shoes, test your uh, test your route, test your turning on corners, things like that. But, that used to be something that used to crack me up all the time about running races. <gasps> they shorted the race. No, they run it by a bird's eye view, right? So if you have a swirling, if you have a if you have a course that has a lot of turns in it, right? Um, they're doing it based on the shortest distance of the turn as opposed to a straight line. Like 
like you're running down the middle of it, so it's going to make your your race link seem longer. Right. But well, but my, the point then is that you're not even running. Right. If if the discussion about your running is simply about the mileage, or in your running, not that there's anything wrong with with preparing for hydration and and fueling. That's so important. The reality though is, what about running? Yeah. What is your plan for how you're going to run? <laughs> you know, and this is where. Um, the race strategy needs to come in, but the running strategy. So when you're doing your dress rehearsals, you have to include skill practice. So we do skill drills in our training for that reason. And if you're a person, and this was really hard for me too, guys, in the beginning, that every training plan that comes out says, run three to five miles, cross train, run three to five miles, cross train, run three to five miles, cross train, then do a long run on the weekend, and every weekend add either 10% or one to two miles. So that then you end up running up to 20 miles, right? And nowhere in there does it talk about what is running. Right. And nowhere in there really, and maybe now some more, I, I, can, I can honestly say I don't really look at training plans anymore, but um, there never was, hey, guys, here's what you should feel while you're running. Hey, guys, here's how to run. Here's how to help yourself become better at running. Right, but... And I get that. And so I'm going to challenge that idea a little bit because that's what we teach is how to run. But you don't want me to just go out and run to run. You, we, we want to run with intention. So oh, I'm right. thinking of the drills we do. And when we do drills of s smaller intervals, holding the fall, holding uh, the fall a little bit more uncomfortable than usual, isn't that when I maybe I'm at the beginning of the race and I'm trying to get away from all the people, I'm trying to find my own spot. So I have to accelerate. Is that what you mean by running strategy? Is that kind of, sometimes you accelerate, sometimes you lean back in, sometimes well, but, you push. But, well, first of all, it's just you have to learn how to run. Right. Period. And once you learn how to run, then you can have discussions on things like that, right? Because if I just say to someone, hey, what do we all say to, to runners? I mean, because the reality is you don't want to do that in the beginning of a race. You want to try to find your pace, right? Right. Especially of a marathon. We're seeing that right now live in Chicago. Right. They started out too fast, the women, and they are not able to hold that for that whole run. And everyone watching is like, oh, they went out too fast. Okay, so that if I'm... If I'm but my point is, what, what does it mean to go out too to fast? Go out, what is, how do you run faster? How do you run faster? How do you run slower? That's what I'm talking about. Meaning is, holding that fall. Right. That's not yeah. a discussion anyone understands. Right. So that's what, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> that's what we're here for. So let's talk about that. So when you said learning how to run. Really, it's about holding that fall and being uncomfortable and then leaning back in. Or well, not, I don't want to say leaning back. You know what I mean. Right. Well, the, the point is this. You have to first learn what is falling. Okay. And how do I fall? What is it? Right. You know, what, and that's where people really struggle. By the way, this is important. We teach a running technique called pose method. Right. And pose method is really a way to teach people how to hold themselves correctly during their run. So it's really about pose itself is a alignment. Okay. Ear, shoulders, hips in line. And when you run, you use gravity to free fall. And then the action in running is called pulling, pulling your foot up from the ground. So you have a job to do in running. So really, first you have to learn your job. That job, right. Yeah, because then we also, I mean, it's, you have to have someone guide you guys. There's just a reality that this is a perception as well. Like I yeah. have to learn what is falling, what does it feel like? <laughs> right. And then how to, what do I do? And so once you understand like, oh, this is the running pose. Okay, this is kind of what falling is. Then when you practice, this is all part of those recitals. Right, right? The, re the, the rehearsals, the right. Re rehearsals. The rehearsals teach you those strategies. Okay. Here's what it feels like to run faster. Okay. Try holding that for 30 seconds just to feel what that feels like. Now try holding it. Not quite so. You know what I mean? Like when you can talk to someone about falling itself, they have a, then an awareness of what that feels like. Then it's a great conversation. Okay. So that's what I want to get back to because I think that's, that's what I want to make clear. When we say you have to learn how to run, we're really saying learning how to fall and how to work with gravity, how to work with gravity, how to let your muscles work naturally instead of trying to control their movement. Yeah. So then what would you say is a, if you were training somebody to run the Chicago marathon, um, what would be your, what would you train them on their running strategy? When, when you talk, okay. when you said about that, now I've learned how to run. I've worked with Valerie for a while. Now I'm going into my marathon. How would you so, coach me? And on we this actually story? have someone out there right now running Chicago. Uh, so that's great. I emailed her yesterday. So 
in her training, so she she did not go into this marathon with a time goal. Okay. Like, it wasn't about racing. She wants to just finish with feeling, without hitting the wall. Okay. And being able to just stay consistently running. Okay. Instead of having to stop and walk or. Yep. Obviously, pain, no pain is number one, but her goal is, can I just run a marathon? Right. You know? So her training has been really about finding her marathon pace and her rhythm. Okay. And and finding that rhythm is, guys, what you're basically doing is matching your cadence to your fall. Because in the beginning, for a lot of people, they want to run, say that, it's the same as like the 20-mile the magic. People come in to run RX, and we talk about 180 cadence, and right. they're all setting their metronomes yeah. and, and trying to run at 180. Right, right. <laughs> and that's fatiguing, because then you're controlling again. Yeah. And instead, you've got to just let your body fall forward a little bit, and that 180 will come because we give you the skill drills those, you know, to practice. Yeah. So her strategy is when the race starts, she's going to work on finding her rhythm. Her the rhythm. The same rhythm she's been using in her training practices, and... It's really funny, but a lot of us that are runner Xers, we either say things like up, two, three, up, two, three, or pull, pull, pull. Yeah. It's our job that we keep reminding ourselves of. And it's a rhythm, right? right. And so then I can add in an exhale. Like if it's crowded in the beginning and right. you feel like anxiety, then up, two, three, breathe. You don't say the breathe. You Yeah. <sighs> Right? Yeah, right, right. I see. So everything is an action. Everything's yeah. a, so then guys, just and it's so, rhythmic. It's yeah, very rhythmic. Right. Yeah. It's, and very soothing. It's almost right. uh, meditative. So that, so let's, I kind of want to reinforce that again, say that again. So it's my, um, learning how to rhythmic, uh, to pull in, in alignment with my fall. Well, is that, it's is matching. That it's matching it's, it. Right. Okay. And, and here's the challenge that everyone's going to face when you first learn to fall. As you can imagine, it's like a toddler. Yeah. When they first realize they can toddle, they like, woo, and then they <laughs> fall right over, yeah. right? Yeah. And But the excitement's there, and then they keep falling, and then finally they figure out their balance, and they're able to take more steps, right? right? That's all toddling's about. Well, we are like toddlers when we first learn how to fall. We have no idea like yeah. how to balance ourselves. Yeah. So every one of us in the beginning falls too much, mm -hmm. which I highly encourage. <laughs> yeah. Because when you fall too much, it clears your mind for a second because you're just scared, you know. And I mean, it, you know, let's be real. It's, we're just falling enough for you to feel what falling feels like. But you've spent all your life not falling. Right, right. And so you're letting go of a little bit of a control, right? Yeah. And so that's the fun of the beginning part is that toddle part. That's the immersion. That's yeah. part of runner X. And then once you find that balance, think about it. Then you just get better and better at better at getting unbalanced. Okay. So that's really kind of how we wanted to talk about this. This rehearsal that we think of when you think of your runs or whatever you're going to do this season is really about finding that rhythm mm -hmm. and really uh, feeling comfortable with holding that rhythm. Right. For two hours is, is what we, no more than two hours is what we recommend. There are other podcasts that we've done on that. But also, just to, to finish up this episode, I kind of want to talk about that idea of this. We put so much on that race day. Mm -hmm. Like, if it doesn't go perfectly, like, if the if the water stations aren't perfectly aligned or don't have enough or Gatorade weather. or the weather or, yeah, or the roads. Oh, my God, they had to turn something on the roads. How do we, how do we... How do we deal with that when we're, during our practice, during our rehearsals, how would you um, help your runners work on those possible things that could go wrong race day? Well, they can also go wrong in training. So okay. that, that's a good one. So, you know, one of, those, one of those would be like weather. And if you know the race is going to be in warmer weather, you have to do some training in warmer weather. Right. right? Maybe you're like, eh, it's really hot outside, so I'm going to stay inside in the AC and run on the treadmill. Well, some days that's okay, but some days you just kind of need to get that's out a, That's a good point because, um, I mean, I used to, this was something that I, that I thought about when I was on my third and my fourth marathon, was I trained my whole first marathon, second marathon, starting at 5 in the morning, right, because it's hot here in Texas. Well, races don't start at 5 in the morning, guys. They start at like 7.30, yeah. and so you're running from 7.30 to noon or whatever you're yeah. running. Um, you have to learn to run in that heat of the day, right? Right. And that doesn't mean you should do all your training. Right, right, right. Day. It just means you need to train sometimes in that environment. And that's important. You know, look at your races that way. And then you also have to think about 
this is the greatest part about knowing how to run. Yeah. Is that because I know how to run, I will be able to adjust my running for like if it's windy or if it's raining or if it's, you know, whatever the, the inclement weather comes in, is you going to be saying to yourself, all right, I'm going to have to basically, you know, choose a different angle of fall, if you will. Like, okay. You know, maybe this isn't going to be, um, but you don't know. And this is the thing. It's like I have, I have a friend that, she came and did the Dallas Marathon one year, and it was pouring rain. I yeah. mean, just <laughs> I remember that raining. One. <laughs> and she's like, I don't want to get out of the car. And I was like, oh, you're getting out of the car. <laughs> we have been training for this race. And she wanted to do below a 320 was her goal. Below 320 was the goal. And she was just like, I don't want to get out of the car. And I'm like, get out of the car. Yeah, <laughs> we're here. We're getting out. <laughs> we're getting out of the car. And I go, just think about the spectators. Like, we have to stay here in the rain. Yeah, just kidding. But <laughs> anyway, she ran a 311. Wow. And the, the funniest part about it, I mean, she really didn't want to get out of the car. And I told her, you're wasting energy right now. Like you sitting here in the car stressing that it's raining. Can you control that? No. So you have to go, it's raining. It's windy. It's raining. It's, so there's people. So because it's <laughs> raining, I'm going to maybe have to pull my feet a little quicker mm -hmm. to make sure I don't slide. Yeah. You know, there's a thought you can have. And I can control that. Yeah. You see what I mean? So I hope, like, my goal is to give you tools so that when you're like, okay, it's really windy, I'm going to really take that, an advantage of that. Because, guys, those of you that have been practicing your fall, a headwind's like a gift. Yeah. Because you can be like, I'm just going to throw my body forward. You Cause know? I, yeah, because I know that it's going to hold me right, up. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and the same thing, like, if I see a hill, instead of being like, oh, my gosh, a hill's coming. Oh, my gosh, a hill's coming. Think about the energy expenditure of that. Yeah. No, you're like, oh, there's a hill coming. Yeah. All right, there's a hill coming. So I know I need to increase my knee bend a little bit, lift my chest up a little bit, and make sure I just keep my pulls low and quick and maybe get my little up two, three, up two, three, so that I just stay steady up that hill. See, I have a job to do. Yeah. And I'm telling you guys, it changes your run because then you're more like, ooh, a hill. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So do you guys get that? That's what I, I mean. It takes us a little while to warm up, but I think that's what you need to understand is when we say how to run, it's because that way that's, that's the biggest part of everything you're doing here in these races and what your, whatever your goal you're trying to hit is the how to run. And once you get that where you're comfortable there, then the rest just becomes other mind challenges that that you have no control over, but you can co totally control how you run. Thank you for joining us on the RunRx podcast. If you'd like to know more, join us at www.runrx.fit. And if you have additional questions that you'd like answered on the podcast, email us at support at runrx.fit. 